Well, in the event and aftermath of Hurricane Sandy, it looks like Wall Street's going to be closed down for a second day, maybe a third day. Unprecedented that it's been closed down two days in a row, except going all the way back to 1888. That's probably due to that storm. Who knows? Uh, I was referencing yesterday. So this did turn out to be a major event. Um, you know, I thought they were blowing it up a lot more than it should have been, but it was the storm surge that flooded out New York, as we all see. Now, I still say, you know, they're going to get over this a lot faster than they, you know, they claim. Uh, you know, the news media does hype up a lot of garbage, but, you know, I'm a person that's always prepared for things. Not that I have 100% everything in line, but, um, you know, prepare means to do things beforehand. And there are so many people that mock people that do that stuff. The majority does. The majority does. You know, it's like, oh, let's have lunch. Let's have fun. That's kind of garbage, you know. <laughs> you know, it's a big joke until it happens. But, you know, I pretty much do joke at stuff because I know that I pretty much prepare ahead of time. As a matter of fact, you know, um, I live in Florida. So if, I mean, even if the weather changed and it had something where Florida went to like 20 below zero, um, you know, I'm prepared for that too. So I have all the right stuff for that type of stuff, for most contingencies. But there are always unforeseen. Um, you know, I want to point out something about this catastrophic storm, too, that it goes to show you how things or how rapidly things can change. You know, the underpinnings that people have always thought were always there, all of a sudden they're not there. You know, you think you're standing on firm ground and you no longer are. You know, nobody ever expected to be flooding in the subways in New York the way it was. And it turned out, you know, it turned out to be true. I expected these guys in the media hyping up stuff more than not, more than it would be happening. But it obviously it did happen, as uh, they said. Now, I want to compare this to, like, why you buy gold and silver bullion. Um, you know, a lot, there's a lot of stories out there, especially about fake gold. In the case of fake silver, I don't know. There's not too much of that around because it really isn't worth faking, especially with coins. I mean, you could probably pick the coin up in your hand and tell it's not an ounce if it had the right dimensions. Um, but still, I guess you should check things and make sure you get it from reputable dealers, without a doubt. Now, with the gold bullion, it's actually pretty easy to check. You know, if you get yourself a scale off of eBay for 7 bucks. And you can digitally weigh it, and you can say it's a troy ounce or 31.1 grams, right? And that's it. I mean, the regular ounce is 28 grams, a troy ounce is 31.1035, whatever the hell it is, but 31.1. And um, it's like you can you can weigh it for you know seven dollar scale. So if you're buying gold, quite obviously, you should invest in a scale, and you can check the diameters. It's very easy. Say for instance, you got the three main ones out here: Austrian gold, Philharmonicas, American gold eagle, Canadian maple leaf. In the case of the Philharmonicas, they're the widest coin. They're 37 millimeters wide, two millimeters thickness. Now, if, when you're, if you're measuring these things and you come up with like 1.9 millimeters thickness or 1.85 millimeters thickness or some crap like that, uh, don't go jumping up to conclusions because you're probably not measuring at the absolute widest point. You know, if everything else checks out, it's 31.1 and you got 37 millimeters width, diameter, and um, not width, diameter. And the coin looks like it's really good. The stamping's on it's good. It's got the right stuff on it in every other respect. And you're coming up with a slightly different dimension on a thickness. You're probably not measuring it right. Because they're not going to rip somebody off for like 8% of the gold going through all this work. You know what I mean? More. So use a little common sense on this because there's getting some wild stories out there. Because once somebody puts out a story about fake gold, everybody thinking, oh, there's all this fake gold out there. Oh. I don't think so. I don't think so, but you should check it. I checked all my crap. I'm telling you that. I checked mine. I checked my silver. I checked every damn thing, okay? I used a scale on it, so, and I made sure. Well, I got most of my stuff from uh, uh, down here near Tampa, Lutz, Florida, which is uh, Gainesville Coins. They've got a good reputation, so, you know, and a lot of stuff was in the boxes. So, you know, and the other place I got a lot of it from was, um, 
over in uh, Utah, near Provo, Utah, which was uh, quality silver bullion. I trust that guy, too, so if you got the QB stamp on there, you're cool. The American Gold Eagle, it's not 100%. Well, you're getting a full ounce, but it's not 100% pure gold, but you're getting a full ounce, so it actually weighs a little bit more than an ounce, so you actually, you know, you're getting almost like 1.1 troy ounces or 1.09 troy ounces. Uh, 33.9 three grains uh, grams excuse me grams and thickness you know so the coin thickness is a little thicker the diameter well these are the dimensions you know 32.7 millimeters diameter 2.87 in thickness and you know don't worry about an error rate of like you know a really small amount you know so you, you make sure you measure it right and same thing with the Canadian in other words the Canadian maple leaf you got 30 millimeters diameter and a 2.73 millimeter thickness and this is 100 percent pure gold there's no um you know actually like i said with the american eagle you're getting a full ounce of gold but it's a mixture it's an alloy it's got 91.67 percent gold three percent silver five percent copper but you are getting a full one troy ounce gold content in there so they just have it for the durability of the gold, of the coin itself now um the other thing is with this, I mean, use a little common sense. So, like, a lot of people are swearing up and down all this stuff is fake. Well, you know what? I know the system still hasn't fallen apart yet, you know, as far as the fiat dollars. But when I look at even paper currency, and I'll prefer paper currency over electronic currency, even paper currency, I consider it all fake. I know I can go in the store and buy goods with it, but that's the only reason I have faith in it, period. Because I could buy hard goods with it. I could buy things that you absolutely need with it. Well, I don't trust the dollar, period. Okay? So that's my take on that. It's just that, um, you know, I know there's a lot of exaggerated claims that the dollar's going to oblivion inside of no time flat. And every time, you know, silver or gold takes off a lot, you know, the end of the world is here next week. That kind of stuff, I don't go for. You know, that type of stuff, I don't go for. But, you know, looking today, uh, silver's bounced somewhat again. It's almost up to 32 again. So, you know, it's like I don't think it's going down to the 20s. So, I mean, if you haven't bought silver yet and you're waiting for it to get it down in the 20s, I think you're making a mistake. So, I'll stick my neck out on that, you know. I'll stick my neck out on silver versus weather storms. But, you know, I want to point out something about New York, too. Um, you know, I've heard so much garbage about it, even, like, say, for in Florida, that, um, you know, it's like two feet above sea level and all this kind of garbage. And actually, that's somewhat true down in South Florida. South Florida maybe you know, 10 to 20 feet above sea level for a large parts of it. But the part of Florida actually I'm in specifically is 120 feet above sea level. You know, a lot of people used to say, you know, when they had the Gulf problem with the oil, they get the hell out of Florida, better move right now because it's going to be all inundated and flooded to the max. Um, actually, before I would get flooded in Florida, where I am particularly, um, Baltimore would be underwater, Boston would be underwater, New York would be underwater. Newark, New Jersey would probably be underwater. The uh, not maybe not down, but they'd be pretty close to it. And uh, Washington D.C. and everything, you know, pretty much everything along the coast. Not to mention Savannah, Georgia. Um, you know, I've actually well planned ahead for a lot of different things. And um, you know, I've, I'm a person that actually prepares ahead of time. That's one reason I have gold, gold coin, bullion coin, that type of stuff. Because what can happen in the financial system is just as quickly as, you know, overnight, overnight. And, you know, all it does is take a panic to, for people to run out of the dollar. So it, it could be one event. It could be anything. So um, as far as fake coins out there, there ain't as many as you'd think. It's the bars. It's the gold bullion bars. It's the bigger stuff. That's the stuff you got to watch for. But don't take, you know, somebody's word that a coin is real. You can actually look up the dimensions. You can actually weigh it. I mean, it doesn't. It costs you. I don't know. What is it? Fifteen, twenty bucks for a Vernier caliber. 
I have the non-digital type because I don't trust any goddamn thing digital for nothing, period. And um, I also have the scale, which is just digital, but this, that's the only thing I have for an option. But if you check it against a bunch of other coins, they're all weighing the same thing, one troy ounce. You got the real deal. It's working right. So, you know, I just have to point out that this stories about this fake gold are greatly exaggerated. It may be something more with bars, uh, governments, that type of stuff. But you have to remember, if you're the guy in a government or you're a very, let me put it this way, you think stupid people with a lot of money, I think there's a lot of stupid people out there with a lot of money. Hell no, hell no. And, you know, the ones that are getting scammed right now is probably... You know, these overblown, exaggerated stories about tungsten and gold. Now, you should be aware because I know it, there's a lot of impetus to sell, you know, um, a kilo bar of gold with tungsten in it. But as far as coins going at, you know, being able to pass them off, it it only take you know, you can invest 25 bucks in a Vernier caliber and scale total and check those damn things inside of like two minutes flat. And so I don't know if there's going to be a lot of uh, coins, you know, being sold that are bullshit, you know. But you should check them. You should check them. But as far as fiat paper dollars, the whole damn thing is counterfeit. You know, I agree with the. I'm in the freaking physical camp. I agree with that. The whole damn thing is counterfeit. Right now, I mean, I could take fiat paper dollars and buy this bike, you know, this motorcycle back here. I could buy that with fiat dollars. At some time in the future, maybe not, maybe not. And, uh, you know, the only thing is, right near, right at the exact moment, the whole damn thing's working. But don't expect it to always work. Don't always expect it to work. You know, this Hurricane Sandy is like something that's pretty good wake up because, uh, you know, it flooded out a lot of areas and never got flooded out, short-circuited a lot of electronic crap. So, you know, it's like, Gold, it's still there. You know, if they short circuit all your brokerage accounts on your computers sitting down there in some vault someplace down there in the bottom of Wall Street, it's still, you know, if you got your gold, you're still safe. So that's the way I look at it. And if you just weigh the damn stuff and you check the dimensions, it's real. It's real. Nobody's going to freaking go through um, the trouble of making fake coins that are so damn good. Well, actually, they can't. They can't make a fake coin that's so damn good that can't that you can't say pick it up and say you know if it looks real and the dimensions check out and the weight checks out. There's no such thing as a fake that that's good. That's going to meet all those parameters. You got the real deal. Whereas you know what, if you're going to worry about the coins, I'm going to tell you this: worry about the paper dollars you got in your wallet. Because a lot of that stuff could be fake, too. I think there's probably more chance of you picking up paper dollars that are fake than there is actually of gold coins that are fake and silver bullion that's fake. But you should check everything. I check everything. And you should prepare. And part of preparation is buying bullion. There's no doubt about it. Because once the system does go down, I think it's got a ways to go yet, though. I think it's got a couple years, probably. But once it does go down, it might be pretty damn quick. And you know, you ain't going to have time for it. So my motto always has been, you know, preparation. So I'm always doing that type of stuff. So that's the way to be. But, um, you know, Hurricane Sandy kind of woke a few people up. But, you know, a lot of people up north didn't even bother to buy generators. You know, they could have they could have got those 1.2 little ones. That you stick, you know, like stick it out on a balcony or some crap, run electricity, but nobody does that kind of shit. Nobody does that kind of shit. I do, I do. I got all kinds of crap, so that's just how I think. 